So welcome everybody. Thanks very much for making time for this and your Friday lunchtime. I am going to, as Rachel said, speak to the early slash modern part of flesh arranges itself differently, which is not uh, my primary of area of expertise. I'm a contemporary art specialist, really. So I'm going to talk about these works as they pertain to this exhibition rather than as an expert on any of these areas. But I thought it would be useful also to talk a little to the process that has produced the exhibition and to how I see it fitting in, I think, to a number of other projects that we've made recently. Um, sometimes there are more insights uh, to be had as you look back on your work and see common threads emerging than you uh, sometimes intend to have put there. So I'm going to start basically by looking back to the two previous exhibitions in our contemporary programme. So one was a solo exhibition with the Berlin-based artist Jimmy Roberts, who made a show in which he used the Macintosh house and elements from our historical collection, including works by Charles Rennie Macintosh, to think about histories of colonialism that connect Scotland and the Caribbean. And this juxtaposed uh, Jimmy's own work, these texts that he produced with materials uh, from our historical collections, from our uh, modern art holdings and others. So putting Macintosh side by side with Jimmy, bringing his concern with queer and black experience into contact with the interiors of the Macintosh house. And then the, the exhibition that followed that was called Dislocations, in which again, historical works were juxtaposed, were put side by side with uh, more contemporary pieces, some loans, some commissions, and some works from our collection. So we could look back to Cezanne or to Nash or to Heckel and put them next to work by Louise Hopkins or Jessica Warboys as here. To have Charlotte Proger, Ian Hamilton Finlay, Thomas Clark, Andre Decker and Graham Etoff, Jade Montserrat and Webb Ellis next to Turner. And in just thinking back briefly to those exhibitions and then on to flesh arranged itself differently i was really uh, conscious that that both of those shows deal in a way with exposing contemporary art to some historical parallels and comparisons and exposing our historical collections in the hunterian which are very rich as i'm sure many of you know to contemporary perspectives and this motif of exposure is one i'm going to try and stay with a little bit today and think about it's been very key to Ned and I as we pulled this exhibition together. So the, the work really started with an aspiration to expose two very different collections to each other. The Roberts Institute of Art has an exceptional collection of contemporary works chosen through the, uh, the intuitions and the passions of David and Indra Roberts in particular. And the Hunterian is founded on the bequest made by William Hunter to the University of Glasgow in 1873. And his collection was also very eclectic. It expressed a certain kind of passion and intuition, but one orientated to the Enlightenment project of understanding the world and assembling um, all kinds of aspects of the world from anatomy uh, through to zoology and in everything in between in a kind of systematic ordering that produces knowledge. And human bodies are key to that, not least because William Hunter was uh, a medical man. He was an obstetrician. His master project was his study of the human gravid uterus, which you see represented here in our 300th birthday party exhibition for William Hunter in 2018, William Hunter and the Anatomy of the Modern Museum. These casts, red chalk drawings and etchings showing dissections of uh, women who had died in advanced pregnancy. So, the Hunt, working with the Hunterian collection as a contemporary art curator is an amazing privilege. It's also sometimes a challenge because these kinds of materials are so powerful. They're so uh, interesting historically. They're so numerous within our now vast collection that sometimes you don't know where to start in dealing with this kind of material. It's human body parts of all kinds make up a, con a considerable part of our collection. And thinking about what that means within the context of an art gallery is also a challenge and uh, uh, a kind of demand is placed on you to 
think about what you can say from a contemporary point of view about things like this scoliotic uh, human spine included it again in that same exhibition in 2018. And one way I've tried to navigate that, maybe working with an artist like Jimmy Robert, uh, working with the, the contemporary artists in dislocations, or here working with Ned and the team at, at the Roberts Institute of Art, is to use a very particular contemporary perspective to read our context, to look through it, to slice through it, to cut into and through it. And that's very much the process that we went on. Ned and I identified quite early on the theme that would uh, relate to the human body. And then by juxtaposing, comparing, exchanging works across the two collections, we found possible relationships, possible affinities with certain kinds of objects that we wanted to draw out. And um, this was a, a process of thinking that I'd already engaged in to some extent when that William Hunter exhibition uh, was on in the program I made then we drew, for example, on works like Philip Warnell's Outlandish, his collaboration with the French philosopher Jean-Luc Nancy, in which uh, Nancy speaks really beautifully about the difference between a human body understood as permanently open to everything outside it, that is permanently exposed to what it is not, to other human beings, and Nancy meditates on this through his own experience of being twice the recipient of a heart transplant, as somebody he says is permanently closed open, stitched back together, but with an otherness inside him that he sees not as, as a unique experience, but in a way as a, a profoundly uh, human one that we all share. The contrast between that and the Enlightenment anatomical project, which Nancy describes as the, the dissection of the world, the dissection of, a, of an inert body, a body that's no longer alive, that isn't exposed to otherness in that same way. So I, I thought again about uh, Nancy's provocative meditation on his own medical experience of being a body exposed to others, uh, a host for another heart or other hearts. And that was um, a kind of motive to to think beyond certain uh, representations in the Hunterian collection that do focus on the cadaver on the dead body as exemplar. So within uh, Flesh arranged itself differently, we have certain uh, representations that stand for that enlightenment project, for knowledge and the, the gaze of medical science as it opens up and dissects the body. This is a, a 16th century panel painting from our collection that, that opens the show. It's the first image you see in this the sort of pedagogic gesture of pointing out to the viewer the features of the, the cadaver that's been dissected on the anatomy table is, is key. And it continues with items from Hunter's collection, like these um, William Cowper watercolour uh, works in which the human body is annotated, flayed, opened out to rationality, but also posed, made expressive, made to, to show itself. And I think uh, I'm right in saying that for both Ned and I, the work on the left in which the arm has been extended away from the body became a really key point of departure, a work which suggests that just as science is understanding the body, looking inside it, opening it out, um, penetrating it with knowledge and so on, it's also starting to produce these, these strange part objects, these body parts that are both maybe more than and less than human. And that one of the, the contentions of the show is that this is a, a profoundly important moment for, for art and for artists. Obviously artists are party to making these representations before photography, but also because, and this is a, a, a print from the same uh, kind of period, 16th century print, uh, showing a skeleton and then the musculature of a man looking at the skeleton, um, in the same pose, obviously, this idea that in order to understand life, the gaze, the scientific gaze passes through death is very consequential. That's not an original argument um, of mine. It's articulated in uh, an important book from 1963 called uh, The Birth of the Clinic by another French philosopher, Michel Foucault. So we were thinking about some of these ideas. What does it mean that, that one of the the key modern experiences of the body, of understanding the body, is one that passes through death, through dissection, through anatomization, through fragmentation. And within that, um, we found certain, within that theme, we found certain representations in the Hunterian collection we could use as an anchor point um, to build uh, 
new relationships around. So, for example, in these studies made by a young art student in the late 19th century, Robert Macaulay Stevenson, who had first trained as an engineer and then decided to enroll at Glasgow School of Art and pursue an artistic career. And like all his peers um, following that programme at the time, he had to make anatomical drawings from plaster casts. So to, to understand the fundamentals of the human body so that he could correctly draw the body in proportion, in motion and so on. And the, the fact that this had become a standard part of art training, again, there's a connection back to Hunter. Hunter was a founding member of the Royal Academy, taught anatomy to art students in the 18th century. Uh, that felt interesting to us. But the fact that in a way these are not necessarily special artistic creations, they're part of a foundation for a certain approach to art making made them interesting. And the other thing that made them interesting to us was the fact that, of course, they start to produce these strange corpuses um, on on the surface of the work of art, these bodies or part bodies made up of views inside, uh, limbs separated from the, the complete picture of the human being. And the, the idea that within the medical uh, scientific understanding of the body and its imaging, often through the agency of artists, there is something transformative at work is also registered for us in this teaching chart, which is included in the show, the kind of uh, large format representation used before PowerPoint to teach students in large auditoriums. It could be easily seen from the front. This is a you know, very tall work. It's reduced onto the side of your screen here. But this is looking at uh, the structures of nerve cells. And as, as you, as a viewer, gaze on it, of course, you're using exactly what's uh, depicted here to perceive it. Your nervous system perceives it. but it isn't, if you're, unless you're a, an anatomist or a neurologist, it isn't something you immediately recognize as like you. In fact, the images are strange, potentially abstract, organic, uh, wonderfully suggestive of other forms. And we were interested in the idea that there's some uh, provocation as science produces these increasingly abstracted images of ourselves that means uh, artists have to respond to that condition. We were also interested in the idea of the nervous system as the point of contact between an individual human being and the world outside them. The exposure of every individual to others and to the world out with their own body is a, a key theme running throughout the show. And in, the, in addition to those uh, 16th century and later uh, works that allude directly to anatomy, we were interested in finding artworks from uh, a later moment in the 20th century that suggest other kinds of splicing, other kinds of hybridization or joining of different realities. So if exposure of the body and exposure to others and otherness was one mm -hmm. uh, point of orientation, another key one is this idea of a juxtaposition that happens within works or very uh, closely across works in which uh, the normal uh, wholeness of an image is cut into, sliced apart, collaged back together. And that's the case here with a work by Eduardo Palazzi from 1960 called A Veterinary Student, which you can see a photographic and printed material has been collaged together to estrange the portrait of this student. And we show it in very close proximity to a work by Jimmy Durham, uh, the late American artist who has taken a uh, a glass object, uh, a broken glass bird, and joined it to this uh, metallic armature. Bringing the two collections very close together, the, the Jimmy Durham from the, the Roberts collection, the Palozzi from the Hunterian, was one uh, key aspiration of the show that we would really combine these two collections, each one changing the way we view the other. But within this mid-century moment, um, I'll just, I'm going to skip on past that one, maybe come back to it. Within this mid-century moment that encompasses uh, Robert Rauschenberg, for example, um, from the Hunterian collection, and Palozzi again, we note the reassembly of a body as if those anatomical fragments in the, the works you saw earlier, bodies opened, bodies flayed, bodies dismembered to be represented, are being reassembled in works like 
Paolozzi's here with reference to a robotic or automaton like forms. Um, reassembled that is under the pressure of the events of the 20th century of the, the destruction of human bodies in the two world wars, the transformation of human bodies through the advances of um, science and military technology in particular. So a kind of catastrophic or post-catastrophic reassembly of the body, a fabrication of bodies, uh, splicing together of new bodies is alluded to in that section of the show. And then elsewhere, um, juxtaposition and uh, combination happen through bringing together works of very different kinds. So uh, in this uh, slide, you see a work by Jan Vo on the far right, next to a painting by Michael Armitage, a figurative sculpture by Huma Baba, uh, two works made using different kinds of exposure by Ian Farah, works by Alana Halperin, and a sculpture from the Hunterian Collection by Tamara Henderson. And this uh, motif of, of juxtaposing, splicing together works made sometimes in a figurative tradition, sometimes in an abstract tradition, but often in relation to conditions in the world out with those works, whether they're biographical facts about the artist and their identity, whether they're to do with the materials that are used, um, especially in the case of Ian Farah, that was really core to the aspiration for the show. It's just to give you a sense of how these relationships pan out, Ned will talk in more detail next week about these kinds of works. But you see on the left hand image here how those uh, Macaulay Stevenson anatomical studies run uh, quickly into a work of a very different kind made by the contemporary artist Rita Ackerman, uh, a blackboard in which figures have been traced and then erased or partially erased. And the the, the aim of the show really, I think, has been to test out certain ideas about how historical, modern and contemporary artworks speak to each other and coexist. And to think about how maybe certain kinds of contemporary art are responses or could be seen as responses to these earlier histories of bodies opened up, exposed uh, to the gaze of knowledge, of bodies assembled, reassembled, put back together, sometimes in this register that I, I think is deeply inflected by the catastrophic nature of the 20th century, bodies exposed to the risk of aerial bombardment, of uh, mass industrial war, of uh, technologies that are able to invent a kind of second nature, as in the Palazzi, and that contemporary artists have responded in a number of different and very dynamic ways to those kinds of histories and to an imperative both to acknowledge the centrality of bodily experience in our lives and the politics of that experience. Again, that's something I think Ned will pick up on when he talks about this next week. But they're also experimenting formally with means to allude to bodies that don't just repeat the kinds of uh, representational strategies that we see in Flesh Arranges Itself Differently in these earlier two moments. The, the moment of burgeoning enlightenment knowledge, the moment of mid-century collagist, bricolage, reassembly. So that's that's the aspiration of the, the exhibition. And at, at one level, I think even without these ideas, its focus on splicing exposure and juxtaposition is very clear just from the kinds of relationships that are formed um, between these very different artworks. And um, as Rachel said at the the outset, we very much hope those of you who are able to travel uh, to see it will do so, or if you're in Glasgow and want to come, um, it, the show is open Tuesday to Sunday, 10 till 5 every day, and it's free, and we hope there is um, much there to discover and enjoy, and I'm uh, very happy to take any questions or observations if anyone wants to offer them. Thank you.